Well guys, it is finally time to bolt up the CR250 cylinder onto the bottom end. Now I've been waiting forever to do this, so let's jump right into it. But let me say, you're gonna wanna stick around for the entire video because at the end, I've got a great opportunity for you guys. All right, let's get started. So the cylinder is all ready to go. Got the exhaust valve all assembled, and this was a cylinder that was repaired by Power Steel. There was a big gouge in it earlier, so I had to fix that, replate it, and weld the exhaust bridge as well. So bore is looking great, and this thing is ready to be bolted onto the bottom end. And the piston I'll be using for this build is a stock size Vertex. Take a look at what we got here inside the box. Got the rings, this is a dual ring piston. Got the circ clips as well. And the needle bearing and piston panda right here. So piston looks great. I'm gonna get it ready to slide onto the rod by installing the piston rings and one of the piston pin circ clips. As you can see, this is a dual ring piston, so I'll be installing the bottom ring first, followed with the top. And the rings look like they're identical from top to bottom, and they're marked right here with a T. So any markings should be facing up. And on two stroke pistons, they make it pretty simple. There's a pin where the ring end gap lines up. Actually, before I slide the rings onto the piston, I'm gonna set the ring end gap here with the cylinder. So how this works is I'm gonna slide the rings into the bore and measure the end gap here on the ring. So according to the vertex instructions, on a two stroke engine, there should be a minimum ring end gap of six to nine thousandths per inch of bore. So the bore on this cylinder is, let's see, 2.6 inches. So I'm gonna go, gonna go 2.6 times the spec right here. And after a little bit of math, the minimum ring end gap should be 16 to 23 thousandths of an inch. So now I'm just gonna compress the ring with my fingers and slide it into the bore here. I'm just gonna work it down inside the cylinder a little bit, about half an inch down. Just gonna make sure it's even all the way around, that way I'm getting an accurate measurement. Looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna measure this little gap here at the end of the rings with a set of feeler gauges. And once again, our spec was from 16 to 23 thousandths. So I'm gonna find a 16 thou here, right there, and see if that fits into the gap. Yep, so that fits in there pretty good, but there's still a little bit of movement, so I'm gonna bump up on the feeler gauge size and find out what the actual measurement there is. Let's go ahead and try 20 thou. So that fits in there. There's a little bit of drag or it's catching on the ring. So that is the gap right there. So that definitely falls within the 16 to 23 thou range that we had earlier. And just to be 100% sure, I'm gonna go ahead and measure the other piston ring as well. So this ring has the same exact measurement, so we're good to go. Next up is gonna be putting the rings onto the piston. All right, let's actually start assembling stuff instead of just talking about it. So I'm gonna lube up the piston here with some Maxima assembly lube. This is just gonna help slide the rings into place. Just a light coat here on the top of the piston will do. So like I said earlier, these two rings are identical and there's a T mark on the top of them. So that T should be facing up. So I'm just gonna locate the ring end gap pin here on the bottom groove, it's right there. So I'm gonna line up the end gap with the ring, expand it, and slide it over the piston. And then for the top ring, just gonna do the same thing. Line up the end gap with the pin, expand the ring over the piston. So right now it looks like the rings are super loose on the piston, like they're almost too big or something. 
but once I compress them and slide them into the cylinder, they'll be fine. And then the last thing to do here is to install one of the piston pin circlips. So what I like to do is there's a little cutout here in the piston. So I'm gonna line one end of the circlip up with that cutout. Should be able to just push that circlip right down inside the piston. And sometimes it helps to have a little flat blade screwdriver to push that circlip down into the piston. So the circlip went a little bit deep inside the piston. Just gonna push it through into the groove from the other side. There we go. It's in there and looking good. And sometimes when you're installing the circlips, the end of the circlip can scratch up the piston here. Just like a light little, light little burr there. So what I'm gonna do is take a file and lightly just smooth that out. Nothing major, but uh, definitely wanna make sure there's no burrs coming off of that. So that feels pretty good right there. And of course, you wanna make sure there's no filings left over here. So the piston's all ready to go, but one thing I forgot about are the cylinder studs. So I'm gonna thread these things in right now. And so since these studs are prone to seizing over time, I'm gonna put some anti-seize here on the threads. And by the way, there are two sides of these studs. There's a rounded face and a flat face. So the rounded side faces up. So how I'm gonna tighten down these studs is by using two nuts and locking them against each other. Just gonna thread the first nut on upside down, just like that, leaving a good chunk of the threads exposed for the top nut. And now I'm just gonna tighten these two nuts against each other and that will allow me to thread the stud into the case. And these studs only need to be torqued to 12 foot pounds. Whenever you're working on the bottom end that's assembled like this one, you wanna have a reg covering up the crankshaft area here. You definitely don't wanna be dropping a nut or like when we're putting the piston pin circlips in, you definitely don't wanna drop something down there like that. All right, let's get this piston installed finally. So most pistons are gonna have an arrow like this one right here on the dome, and that should always be facing towards the exhaust port or exhaust side of the engine. So this piston will be installed just like that. So when looking at the exhaust side of the piston here, you'll notice that there aren't any lubrication or cooling holes drilled. And so this Vertex piston is a cast piston and those holes are not necessary on a cast piston. However, pistons like a Forge Wiseco will need those holes drilled. And the reason for drilling holes on a Forge piston and not a cast one is because cast pistons and Forge pistons expand at different rates. So the first step in installing the piston is to install the needle bearing for the piston pin. So I'm just lubing up the inside of the rod here and then I'm gonna slide through the wrist pin bearing. You definitely want this bearing lubed up pretty well. Just wanna give everything a nice coat of lubricant before it goes together. And like I mentioned earlier, this arrow right here needs to point towards the exhaust side of the engine. So I'm gonna slide on the piston just like so. And since I have the circlip installed on this side of the piston, the wrist pin will need to go through the other side. Just gotta wiggle the piston around a little bit and the pin should slide through. There we go. And so the last thing to do here is to install the other circlip here into the piston. So once again, I'm gonna put one end into a cutout here on the piston and try to work the circlip in without scratching the piston. There we go, popped right into the groove. And this is more personal preference than anything, but I like to have the ends of the circlip lined up with the cutout here on the piston. That way there's no possible way that circlip can come out. So before I slide on the cylinder, got the gasket to install and the two dowel pins. So I believe the dowel pins go, let's see, look at the bottom of the cylinder here. They go on the left side. So on these two studs here. And not a bad idea to put some anti-seize 
on the dowel pins either. And like always, I like to put a thin layer of grease on the gasket surface. This just keeps the gasket into place and then if I have to pull the cylinder off for any, any reason down the road, the gasket will stay in one piece and it won't tear. So you can see that grease holds the gasket into place pretty good and prevents it from shifting around before I get that cylinder on. So at this point, it is time to finally slide the cylinder on. I am super excited. And of course, before I slide this piston into the cylinder, I'm gonna wanna have a nice coat of lube here on the skirts and inside the cylinder board as well. And so how this is gonna work is I'm gonna line up the rings with the pins as best I can. Just try to get them centered here on the locating pin. And obviously the first ring is gonna go into the cylinder first. So I'm gonna compress that just with my hands here, with my fingers. Just gonna to try to get the cylinder square on the cases here. Do my best to compress that ring. And if you have an extra set of hands here, like if you have a buddy to help you out, that helps out quite a bit. I'm trying to get these rings into the cylinder. So ring number one is in, and now ring number two. I'm gonna do my best to line this one up with the pin as well. Looks pretty good. Gonna slide down the cylinder a little bit more. See if I can get that second ring started inside the bore. Just a light little wiggle. Get that thing started. And now at this point, I've got the ring started inside the cylinder. Just gonna do my best to keep the cylinder square with the cases. And just squeeze that piston down inside of there. Just slow and steady. Gonna get it lined up with the studs here. And once I'm on the studs, it should have no problem with uh, lining anything up. It'll just slip right down. Just like that. Man, that is looking fresh. I love how the cylinder looks with the cases. Super happy with how that turned out. So you guys saw how easy it was to slide the cylinder onto the studs here. So having new dowel pins here inside the studs helps out so much. And then having anti-seize or grease on them too, that just makes everything slide together so much easier. And then down the road, say I have to pull this top end off to rebuild it, the cylinder is just gonna slide right off without any issue. Like it won't have any problems with those dowel pins corroding or rusting. Now I just gotta locate my nuts, for the cylinder that is, and I should have this thing all torqued down. Now the cylinder nuts call for 29 foot-pounds, so once I torque those in a crisscross pattern, I've got a little surprise for you guys, so hang tight. So of course, next up is gonna be the cylinder head. And let me show you guys what I'm working with here. This thing is so trick. It is made by Fat Head Racing. I cannot wait to put it on. All right, so here's the deal with these heads. The biggest benefit is that they have interchangeable domes, which allow you to change the compression ratio of the bike, which will obviously change the power. So I've got two different domes here. This one is pretty close to stock compression ratio. And then this one bumps up the ratio a little bit. So once I have this bike running, I'm gonna test out these different domes and see which one I like. And then also what's cool about these heads is they improve cooling. So check out all these ports here, keep your bike cool. And on top of all that, these things just look trick. Can't wait to mount it up. So like I mentioned earlier, these heads are made by Fat Head Racing. And what was really cool of them to do is they donated one of these heads to me to raffle off for my cancer recovery fund. So how this is gonna work is they've got a variety of heads over there on the website from different bike sizes, different manufacturers. And so when you enter the running for the head or for the raffle, you're gonna be able to choose which head you want. So you can enter or you can buy as many raffle tickets as you want. Each one is $1. And this raffle is gonna end this Saturday, September 15th at midnight. So get your tickets bought before then. And as soon as this video ends, what I want you guys to do is head over to fatheadracing.com, ph racing.com 
and check out what they've got. And so while we're on the subject of cancer treatment and cancer recovery, I figured I'd give you guys a little update. So I've been through two chemotherapy treatments so far and they say I've got like four to six more. So that's like six more months of chemotherapy. And just to give you guys a little idea of how much that costs, it's like 10 grand a month for treatment, pretty crazy. So of course I'm trying alternative treatments, doing whatever I can on my own to get better, you know, kick cancer's ass and get through this. But uh, it's like a constant roller coaster. Every time I go in for treatment, they knock me back down to ground zero to build myself back up to like where I'm at right now. You know, I have decent energy. I'm able to work on the 250 a little bit. And then when I go back in for treatment, like on this Monday, they're going to just knock me completely out again. And so it's pretty tough to go through, but overall it's going pretty good. So I appreciate your guys' support. I wouldn't be able to get through this without you. And let's just keep on trucking. Let's kick cancer's ass. All right, enough BS. Let's get this head mounted up on the engine. So Fathead supplied some O-rings for the dome and the head. So I'm gonna get these into place and mount up the head. So this style of head uses O-rings instead of the traditional style metal gasket. And so I'll be going with the stock compression ratio dome just to eliminate any issues from the get-go. And then it looks like Fathead supplied new nuts and washers for the head as well. And then for the cylinder, just gonna wipe this down with acetone, make sure there's no oil or assembly lube left over. This is one gasket surface you don't want to have any grease or oil on, that's for sure. Oh, and one more thing before I put the head on. I'm gonna make sure the engine turns over without any issues. Just seeing if that piston goes up and down in the bore without catching on anything. All looks good. So we're ready to go. And on goes the head finally. Sweet, that looks good. Now it's very important that the head nuts get torqued in an even pattern and the torque spec for this head is 20 foot pounds. So at first I'm gonna tighten all these to 10 foot pounds and I'm just gonna go in a crisscross pattern here. So much like tightening a wheel on a car. Now I'm gonna bump it up to 15 foot pounds and follow the same pattern. And then up to 20. And boom, just like that, the motor is now finished up. Such a good feeling. Always a good idea to pop in a spark plug just trying to keep anything from entering the engine. All right guys, that is gonna wrap up the CR250 engine build. So as you can imagine, the upcoming videos are gonna be of assembling the bike and you definitely do not wanna miss out on that. So if you're not already subscribed, go down below right now and hit that subscribe button. And I just wanna give a big thank you to the companies that have been helping out. Fathead Racing provided the head, Power Seal USA did the cylinder repair, and then Vertex Racing provided the piston. So huge shout out to those companies. And a big thank you to you guys for following along with this project and giving me all the motivation in the world to finish this bike. Oh, and for those of you asking about the CampStrong hats, they are now available over on PrimeMX.com. With that being said, keep it prime, guys.